is December 23rd, so I did the first video on this quite a while back. Just now uh, took it apart to clean it and check it out. I wanted to see exactly uh, how well this had held up. Anyway, this is what we're looking at here. Still a little liquidy. Looks like the die numbers are transferred. I might use a little bit more. I might clean this up, use it just a hair bit more. Yeah, I probably didn't use enough on that. It's still running cool, but uh, CPU has been great. So it looks to me that I wanted to use a little bit more than I did on the GPU because the CPU still has some left on it that's liquidy. Uh, it would have been fine. I just wanted to clean the whole thing. I was just curious and I wanted to see how it turned out. So anyway, uh, I'm going to have to replace all the tape around here too because you can see that it does have a little bit of a, a bubble, a bit of a gap. So I'm going to replace, clean everything up. Uh, I'm going to replace a lot of this too. But you can see on here, it was actually hard to take off. Uh, these came off actually on here. Some came off on here. Um, right here, connected there. Very hard to peel off. So it was touching. Everything was good. The heat transfer was great. No issues at all with the size that I chose on any of these or the, uh, I should say, the width of it. You had to excuse my thumbnail, it actually uh, fell off a while back, it got slammed really hard, so that's why it looks really nasty. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'm gonna clean all this up, we're gonna do another application, and I'm gonna see how it goes. I just wanted to show you guys a quick little follow-up of uh, what this looks like months later. It actually cleaned up pretty good off the die. Uh, I'm still working on it right now, but uh, you got to really clean this stuff off, so I suggest using some good cleaning compounds like the ones that I recommended in the last video. Surface Purifier it basically is a uh, proprietary mixture of alcohol, but you can see what color it's making these Q-tips. This is like my fifth one here. So, um, nothing on here. Here's a dry. Here's a dry one. Little bit still comes off. I'll probably use a little more purifier and cleaner, but I'm gonna go ahead and clean this all up, uh, put it all back together, screw some more shit on it. This, you can see, it started to kind of react with the copper in a good way. It's made it a little more porous. It started bonding with it. So all the, the actual liquid is in these little crevices here. It's, I can kind of feel it with, with this. But what I'm gonna end up doing is uh, just putting some new on top. I've already purified and cleaned this, and the gallium itself is still in the actual copper, so i got to let it air out for a while as much as possible. Well, I'm still going to try to clean it as much as I can. Um, it's actually going to make a better, uh, a better bond this time than it did the first time, so the cooling is going to be even better than it was before. So anyway, let me get this... Uh, finish clean and we'll uh, do a new one. There's been some confusion and quite a few people have asked about air leaks as well. Uh, when you first get this, some will have a little piece of tape here, some won't. I put this tape on here. This is actually some uh, electrical tape that I'm going to remove and then I'm going to put new electrical tape on, of course, using the Super 33, high temp. Um, but uh, the fan is pushing the air out. But do you see this? That's a gap right there. That's a pretty pretty good sized gap. I mean. And it should be all enclosed. Instead of spreading the air everywhere else, it should be enclosed where it's just pushing it right out through the exhaust here. Where it's gonna be cooling everything else instead of going other places where we don't want it to go. So we want all the air to be focused on here for cooling. 
Um, anyway, that's an air leak. Also, along the seam here, that's an air leak as well. Even when it's pushed down with the case, it doesn't really stop that air leak. Now, the tape that they use, if you've taken this off once or twice, uh, literally no adhesive. It's been cooked. It's some type of uh, thermal safe tape. Um, it is, however, connected with this piece here that goes on the end of the fin. So I'm keeping this on. I'm just going to run a new piece of tape around the fan that way. So same deal with this fan over here. Same exact thing. So just something to keep a keep your mind on. Uh, another thing too, somebody noted to me last time. Yeah, that was pretty dumb of me. Uh, I didn't remove the battery. That is something you guys are gonna wanna do whenever you're working on this. Remove the battery. Uh, first thing is this little silver slider. No, that's not the superhero, the silver surfer. No, this is the silver little slider thing. This goes back and forth. And you'll wanna slide that back. There it is normally. You wanna slide that back and then you just kinda lift up and out with the cord. So. Take the screws out first, up and out, good to go. Uh, anyway, let's uh, get this thing put back together and fire it up and see what we're looking at. All right, so I got it all put back together. Uh, we're sitting right around 36, 37 degrees. Uh, pretty good, really. I mean, pretty good, really. Uh, although I do still have this uh, cooling pad, which uh, you know, cools at maybe one or two Celsius, not really a whole lot. I just like having the, uh, you know, idea of cool air going straight in, you know, just kind of as a uh, ease of mind, so to speak. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, you know, getting better temps than it was before. We've got this underclock going on right now, or the undervolt, I should say. I can stair step this up a little bit more, but just for stability, I like just doing the negative 0.125. Uh, let's go ahead and do a stress test on this. I'm gonna start testing it now. Let's keep an eye on those temperatures. Of course they're gonna go up high, but I mean, it's gonna be using 100% of the CPU. With no thermal throttling, nothing, 100% CPU, we're looking at 44 degrees. Wow, did I just read that right? 41 degrees? <laughs> uh, wow. That's, that's pretty fucking cool. So that is proof that the bonding does uh, increase after you clean it after a while, after it kind of sits into the copper. It's going to you know porously make a better bond, um, dissipate the heat a little bit better between the two, the dye and the heat sink, meaning the two. Uh, when you do use uh, liquid gallium as a, and I use the thermal grizzly conducting on, of course, but while you're using that, uh, it definitely is going to, uh, you know, create a better bond. Once you clean that out, you reapply it, use a little bit more on the reapplication of it, and you're going to be having great temps uh, all around. When I'm gaming, my GPU is getting really low temps as well. And they do share the same heat pipe, so while this is running, it may increase uh, temp a little bit because it's going to strain it just for a second while it's trying to open this up. But I'm going to hit my ROG button. Let's open this up and take a look at our GPU. That's also at a 34. Fucking amazing. So those do share the same heat pipe. So, uh, part of my French there, guys. Anyway, uh, pretty wild success. Let's do a quick little game, and I'm going to start this test now. Let's do a quick game. Uh, crisis on Ultra Settings. Uh, crisis 3, by the way. Ultra Settings, and uh, let's uh, open up our GPU temp graph here. Another thing as well uh, with this, you can go ahead and you can do Control F. You can set your own manual fan curve if you want. Uh, I've also set my own curve here, which you can see is a lot lower and it keeps it running a lot cooler. Uh, so that's definitely something you guys can do if you're interested. Um, right now we're just going to be checking out the 
the temps on here at GPU usage as we are playing Crisis 3 on ultra settings which uh, before would really tax it and it would heat it up quite a bit because I mean everything is uh, ult you know ultra settings I think the Crytek engine is still one of the better uh, graphics engines so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let this load up and we'll jump in give it a brief little test here Come on, you slow bastard. Oh, it's Origin. For some reason, my Origin is making me actually uh, open it up in Origin instead of actually just clicking on the icon. There it goes. I gotta clean my, uh, my screen, looks like. Now, I am going to use a controller again on this game just so that you guys can uh, see it running around that it's actually playing while I'm holding my uh, my phone with my other. Press start to begin. Okay, well, I'm pressing start. I don't know why it's not beginning. There it goes. No. Nope. Hmm. So my controller is not working. There we go. Maybe it'll work now. Yeah, now the controller's working. Good. Okay. So we're going to go up to resume game. Again, it's on ultra settings. Get some of that dust off there. Shit. playing one-handed here, so I'm definitely not going to be shooting anybody, but uh, I can definitely run around. Maybe not run either. Okay, I'm going to try to shoot this motherfucker one-handed. Come on. Oh, you bastard. Come on. Fuck. Maybe we'll sneak up and we'll, uh, we'll gank him. Okay. Now I'm gonna go invisible. I'm just gonna sit here for a bit. Okay. Oh fuck you. We gotta kill this guy too. Definitely hard to play one-handed. I'm glad I have two hands. I'm not disabled. So we'll go back, let's check out, see what kind of temps we're looking at. 55, not bad, not bad. Let's check our monitoring here. Highest temp while we were gaming was 61, 63. Wow. Stellar, even before uh, with my, uh, you know, with my testing and everything, it would still get up to about 72. So we dropped about 10 degrees Celsius. Phenomenal. Um, on the GPU, however, this was still spiking to around, uh, yeah, 65, sometimes uh, even 73, depending on the game. Uh, right now, we're looking around 55 Celsius. So it's dropped dramatically on the GPU as well as the CPU. Uh, so for me, I think that's a big success. Um, we'll go ahead. We'll do some more testing here. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Keep updated. If there's anything you would like to see me do, uh, let me know and we'll uh, get that done as well. But thanks for tuning in. Again, great success on this uh, Conductonaut Thermal Grizzly. Can't recommend it enough. The only thing is, just be careful when you're using it. Of course, uh, I hold no liability for anything you guys do with it. You know, if you like to squirt it all over on your in parts, um, whether on your computer or anything else, 
you know, that's completely your own thing. I'm not telling you to do any of this stuff. It's just, uh, you know, something that I like to do on my own and just showing you how it actually works. So uh, I would recommend cleaning it after a few months. Again, uh, this has been some months after I've applied it myself. Uh, let's go ahead, open up YouTube here and let's see exactly when I posted the last video so you guys can see how long it's been. It really hasn't been that that long. Um, five months ago. So within five months, I did this cleaning and it's had enough time to form a better bond uh, and kind of go into that actual cart uh, copper heat sink a little bit better. So uh, I recommend within, you know, first four, five, six months, cleaning off the old paste, doing a very good clean with some good compound and reapply it. And I think you guys will be looking at uh, some better results like I have. Anyway, uh, signing off here. Let me know if you guys think and hit that subscribe button.